Oh hey, what's happening there YouTube? It's Brian House here for Housework and today we are going to be building a soft backed platen for a 2x72 belt grinder. Now the platen we build today is going to be fitted up to the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder. If you're not familiar with that project, I'll put a link down below. Essentially it's a big heavy industrial grinder that we designed, prototyped and led to manufacture right on YouTube. You all have supported my work by building the device and buying my plans and I wanted to say thank you to you and every piece of content that I push out to you all is a result of the hard work we have done together. So thank you so much. If you'd like to find out more about that project or you want to purchase pieces, parts, and plans, you can go to my website, housemade.us, and we can make that happen for you. Now this build, uh, it's very stupid simple, okay? About 15% of this video is going to be build and the other percentage, whatever that math is, <laughs> I'm going to show you why I think it's such an important component to, uh, or an attachment to have on your belt grinder. And if you do it the right way, uh, you don't need hardly anything to make this happen. You probably have most of this stuff in your workshop. So anyway, guys, let's take a look at what we need to make this happen and let's get started with the build. All right, so you're going to need some spray adhesive. Uh, you need something to back up the entire apparatus. This is actually what's going to mount to your platen backer. Uh, all right, and in this case, I'm using just mild steel. This is about an eighth inch thick. Um, in the past, I've used aluminum. Uh, the reason why you need some sort of piece of steel for this uh, is because I like to uh, drill and tap into this. This is an old surface conditioning belt. Now, I think these are exactly perfect for this purpose. Um, if you have surface conditioning belts and you've ever had one tear or break on you, uh, don't throw it away. You're going to use it for this purpose. And, and that's exactly what happened with this belt right here. In fact, this is the belt that grabbed the knife that threw it into my apron when I was knife making. That was the catalyst. That experience was the catalyst for me building the Revolution 2x72. So these little pieces of felt here are kind of kind of neat little pieces of history for me. Um, the reason why I like these is because there's hardly anything you need to do to them and they're nice and soft, all right? So they're going to give you a nice backer. This piece of belt is actually going to go between the uh, steel backer and a piece of leather, okay? And this is just thin leather. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Um, you know, you can get this on Amazon. I'll put links down in the description so you guys can find surface conditioning belts. I'm sure you all have them. You probably have them somewhere stored in a drawer or whatever. Um, grab your most worn out one and use that. But yeah, this uh, piece of leather here, we're going to cut it down to size. And this will be the face of the softback platen. Okay, so real quick, we just have to uh, make some marks here for where the holes are going to go. So just line up your, your backer with... Um, the new soft platen backer and then we're just gonna clamp it on there and make some marks okay let's drill and tap some holes This little device that I made for my mill and my drill press is probably one of my most favorite tools in my workshop. If you haven't watched the video about me making this thing, uh, I'll put a link down in the description so you can go out and find it. Okay, we're gonna drill and tap two holes, quarter 20. Got a couple new tools to show off. Uh, this is a YG tap. Uh, I get these on Amazon. Uh, this was a, a referral from uh, Richard Beck over at Beck's Armory. I'll put a link to his channel down below. He makes grinders, he makes uh, forges and forge burners and does some uh, cool stuff on his channel. But he turned me on to these uh, through the DIY belt grinders and machines group on Facebook and i love these and because they're so um, this piece of material here is so thin uh, we can just use a drill to um, actually do the tapping so
Oh yeah. Have you seen these guys? Make it, it's like a drill attachment or a ratchet attachment for a tap. Made by Irwin. I get these on Amazon too. It's like 30 bucks, totally worth it. All right, spray adhesive is a messy enterprise. So I like to lay down some parchment paper and this is super stupid simple. Shake the can, yeah, and spray. Now, once you spray, you're gonna wanna let it get tacky before we assemble everything. Let's wait a few minutes. <laughs> okay, so everything is nice and tacky. Uh, the first step I'm going to do is just, let's see, wait, we gotta think about this, right? So this piece here is going to be on the face of the leather. Right, okay. Those two pieces are bound together now. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And now I need to add some more spray adhesive to this so I can attach it to the steel. Okay, it's been a few minutes. This is nice and tacky and we are going to place this on top. Yeah. All right. And I can already start to feel the squishiness. Oh, very squishy. Very squishy. And then I'm just going to set something heavy on it. Let it sit overnight. Okay, it's the next day. You can see what we've done here. We've created this nice, squishy, soft platen. It's got two holes in it. Uh, in my case, they're a quarter 20, ready to thread into our platen backer right on our Revolution 2x72. Let's give it a shot. Okay, I'm gonna use some uh, quarter 20 half inch bolts with a lock washer on it. Line everything all up, and we're just going to finger tighten this for now. Let's lock it into place. If you use bolts that are longer than a half inch, you're going to want to trim them down uh, so that they're not pushing through and creating a bump on the face of your platen. And now that we have it all mounted on the backer, I'm going to line up the face of it with the face front face of the platen wheel. Just like to use a straight edge or square or something for this. Squishy. Now you're probably saying to yourself, Brian, what in the Sam hell are you doing making this soft backed platen? And the best way I could show you is to just demonstrate why I think this is such an important tool. These are, this is a common knife I make. This is a culinary knife, a butcher knife or whatever. I grind with the edge up typically. And you can see here in the light, there are some inconsistencies in the angle in which I laid the blade up against that two inch belt. And as I'm grinding, I'm running it this way and that way. And it's really difficult to keep the same angle the entire time you're, you're actually doing that work. So you get these little rounded over spots. The blade itself might have some rounded over uh, pieces. This side's really easy to see. You can see it goes up to about right there and then it, it's wider right here and then it goes down. What the soft back platen does is actually covers up all these sins. It helps you blend these lines in. And um, yeah, it's just a great little tool. So let me just go ahead and demonstrate how I clean up my blades using the soft back platen. Okay, to get started with removing and cleaning up these lines, I'm gonna do a 100 grit ceramic belt. This is where we're gonna start, and then we'll probably end up finishing the blade with a surface conditioning belt.
What you saw happen there was about three minutes worth of finish sanding on a 100 grit ceramic belt. Uh, both sides uh, I finished. That's a nice flat grind right there. Just sprayed it down with a little Windex to kind of clean it up from the water. Uh, because I grind post heat treat, uh, you really want to pay attention to how warm your blade gets as you're working it. Uh, but what I love about this system is if you were to say, instead of having a soft back platen, you had the high carbon face or even just mild steel, any twisting motion this way or this way is going to create divots in your blades and it's going to be very obvious. Um, with this system, it just simply does not. It's very forgiving. It's very soft. Um, you could even do convex grinds if you want with it. Um, but yeah, let's uh, take this up another notch. I'm thinking maybe we go to, uh, say, a 200 grit belt, and then we'll do a finish with a surface conditioning belt and some WD-40. I was listening to the Toby Fire and Steel podcast and he did a great piece with Jeremy over at Simple Little Life talking about lubricating your uh, conditioning belt, surface conditioning belts with a little bit of WD-40 and then doing your belt finishes with that and it gives a nice satin finish and I've been doing it and I absolutely love it. So let me show you how that works. A little bit of WD, you don't have to go crazy. A little bit goes a long way. And then we're going to go in uh, kind of slow in forward. And then we're going to put a satin finish on this belt or satin finish on this blade using WD-40 and a surface conditioning belt. Just a few passes and you have a really, really nice belt finish uh, using that surface conditioning belt and a WD-40. Uh, absolutely beautiful satin finish, really simple to achieve. I hate hand sanding so I don't do a lot of it, especially when I'm working with uh, knives like this because they're working knives. You know, I'm not going to put a mirror finish on this blade, it's just going to get damaged anyway. So. Uh, really like using the surface conditioning belt, especially with the soft back platen because it adds just another layer of softness and you can really push up against it and not do a ton of damage to your blade. So yeah, I'm impressed. I really love this system and I hope you guys build one too for your grinder. This is one of those tips that I learned early on when I started knife making. It was kind of a game changer for me because you know, my muscle memory wasn't all that great when I started doing flat grinds and especially culinary knives. Uh, I like to cook and I also found that when I make knives, uh, the culinary knives just typically are more popular. So, um, you know, being able to grind those big, long, flat uh, grinds like that without too much headache was really kind of important. Um, I believe I read about this, um, this soft platen somewhere on the blade forums maybe, but I can't really fully remember where I got the tip. So whoever invented this, thank you. I don't know who you are. Um, it's, it's an awesome piece of equipment. The other thing I really like about this is that when you build it like the way I built it, uh, you know, your platen backer stays on the machine. It's just two half inch quarter 20 bolts that you have to remove in order to swap it back to the high carbon face or if you're just using the mild steel backer for your grinder, it's literally two minutes if not less, uh, probably take you longer to find the wrench than it would to actually swap out the uh, platen. So anyway, guys, I truly appreciate you hanging out in my workshop and studio. One of the things I wanted to mention was if you do leave me a comment down below, it helps uh, push my videos out to the masses and it also assists me in my business and everything that I'm doing So if you could just leave me a hashtag work for it down in the comments section or hey I'm here or hey great info that is a 
and really great way to support my channel. Uh, it's so simple and quick to do and it just is a game changer for me. Uh, but if you got something out of today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button also. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you click that little bell, you get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. There's many ways to support my channel. There's uh, Patreon, there's Buy Me A Coffee. You can go to my website, housemade.us, and you can buy pieces, parts, and plans for the Revolution 2x72 belt grinder project. Uh, you can just leave me a comment. Um, you can shoot me an email. Um, you can listen to the Work For It podcast with me and Ben Butler, where we discuss business in the workshop. That's available on any major podcast platform. As always, guys, it's been such a great time hanging out with you in my workshop and studio. I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been housework.